Well, hello everybody, it's Leanne Greff, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Minot, North Dakota, with today's live video. So, it's been a day. <laughs> First of all, make sure you, you log in or, or uh, give me a comment telling me you're here, uh, where you're from. If it's your first time here, I'd like to know as well. Um, why has it been a morning? Um, well, my Google account was hacked. And I have Gmail, and that means I have no access to my email. So if any of you are my customers who have um, contacted me via email in the past, that is no longer active, and you cannot do that. I doubt if we can recover it. Um, we got hacked, and it was an email from Google, and it said do this and this, and I don't usually touch anything because I'm afraid of this exact thing, and so had my husband look and he said yeah I think it's I think we need to do that and so he did it and within minutes I got weird emails and I didn't we should have shut it down and we didn't and so this morning we woke up and have no access they've protected themselves whoever got in and I hope my contacts are not, not hacked as well oh I tell you um and uh, it's just been a morning you know when you lose access and that means I my YouTube account is also hacked and I don't have access to that. So I looking at it when we went online on my husband's computer, all my email or my videos are gone. All of my, I don't know, 10 plus years of videos are not there. So I don't know if we're gonna get them back or what. So luckily I have access to Facebook. Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting. So I, it'll be a day or a week or longer of recovery and changing emails and all that stuff. Yeah, technology, exactly, Jean. It's it's great when it works. I love technology and emails and Facebook and YouTube and all that and Pinterest and all the fun things. But it is it is yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, so anyway, don't don't email me and expect an answer. I will develop a new email and let everybody know, I guess, what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep a smile on my face. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I will let everybody know what my new email address is. So let's get going with today's um, event. All right, so last week the door prizes were some cards that I made a while ago. They are some fun fold cards. And this was the prize for uh, sharing. And the cards and envelopes was the prize for commenting. So these, I believe these are still available to Paper Pumpkin subscribers. It is um, our Good Things cards and envelopes. So really cool. Um, uh, bonus add-on to our paper uh, pumpkin subscribers. Okay, winners are Eddie Potts won the cards and envelopes and Susan Burton won the finished cards, the hydrangea cards. So congratulations, gals. Thank you so much for commenting, sharing, um, getting my videos. <laughs> I might only have Facebook videos now. I don't know. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but the prizes for next week are the Back on Your Feet stamp set for sharing and a pack of in color jewels for commenting. So be sure that you, you log, you know, say hi and give me some comments on what you like and, and what you don't and tips or whatever you'd like. So those are prizes for next week's video. Hopefully I don't lose access to Facebook. Oh, I'll have to try and find my account and change my email on that too who knows if that's gonna I better yeah I, oh yeah it's been a morning I'll have to change my accounts for everything oh it wasn't available Kathy oh I'm sorry okay everybody sorry the the good things uh, cards and envelopes I guess are not available anymore um, I do want to mention that I do still I will through January I will be offering my uh, designer paper share so this paper share is 95 sheets of six by six of every single uh, designer paper, specialty paper in the spring catalog. So that's every single one. I didn't exclude anything. So if you want to have a little bit of everything, um, 
it is $34.50 plus shipping for long distance people. And you can access that on my shop. So far that's still good. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I have access to that. So yeah, that's while supplies last, basically hopefully things don't go into back order, I shouldn't say back order, unavailable status um, because that's what happens now. They don't do back orders. They just turn numbers off when they run out of stock. So my bonus for ordering using a host code you know, are the pastel adhesive back sequins and you get two sheets in two different sizes. And that's for a $55 order or more. And then of course, you know, if you order $50 or more, you get something free out of celebration. So yeah, that's the big bonus. You get lots of free things. And if you're gonna order around $100 anyway, you should get the starter kit deal. It is incredible right now. I've already had two people join and two or three more are planning on it. So in the back of the celebration, you can access that online too, is the join offer. So what you can get um, for $129, you get $175 in product of your choice plus a mini machine. Now you can get the blue or the white. And guess what? This blue is an upcoming in color for 2000, um, later this year in May, we'll get a new in color and I don't know what the name is, but maybe it's Boho something because this is called Boho Blue, maybe that's the name. Um, but yeah, so it's really good. You get to choose $175 of your choice for 129 and that includes the mini machine. Basically it adds up to $258 or more. Um, now, if you don't want a new mini machine, you can choose option three, which is just $99, and you still get to choose $175 of your choice. Shipping is free. It's it's a great deal. I And some people are what we call kidnappers, and that's okay. Stampin' Up! expects some kidnappers, and kidnappers are, are people who get the deal and don't order much more. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And so Stampin' Up! hopes people will stay in and order a little bit. Maybe stay in for a while and get a little, what we call addicted to Stampin' Up! But if you don't, they're okay with that. They're teasing us, they're teasing you by, by joining in with this awesome deal. And there are no penalties for, for doing this and dropping. So, but you have access to my Flora Bugs group, all of my tutorials, we do prizes and challenges and we have a lot of fun in our Facebook group, plus our videos and our Zoom meetings and lots of good fun on our Flower Bugs team. So if you're interested, let me know. Don't email me, <laughs> message me um, here on Facebook or send me a text or something so we can talk. We can always chat on the phone about any questions you have about joining. And like I said, it's $300 minimum purchase every three months. Your first three months are free. So actually, you don't have to order $300 until the end of June. And anything you order in the meantime between now and June counts towards that $300. So it's such a good deal. And, and then after June, you can decide, do I want to stay or do I not? So anyway, it's, a, it's an awesome deal. Okay, what else do I have to say? The couple things are not available right now. Um, they're out of stock. The Lucky Clover Punch is gone for now. Stylish Shapes Dies and the Quatrefoil Tile Embossing Folder. Those items are out of stock. Okay, I think, I think we're ready to play. And the products, one of the main products we're going to play with today is, uh, I had it open, the Dandy Designs designer paper. So before I get into them, I'm going to show you this big 12 by 12 stack. Now this is free with a $100 purchase. It's 48 sheets for each of 12 double-sided designs, and it's a ton of colors. So I'm going to attempt to fan fold this so you can see some of the designs. It's just really nice, um, polka dots and stripes and flowers and uh, plaids, whoops, and the stars. Yeah, it's just beautiful. I'm, we're gonna play and I have three sets of the cards that we're gonna make today. So this is a lot of people's top pick. I mean, there, there are some stamp sets and some $50 papers, but this has been a, a 
a great um, option for a lot of people. So a couple swaps that I received here, they used four different patterns on this card and it works. Like their little ribbon uh, technique that this was. This is also using a set of dies that we're going to be using and that is the Something Fancy dies and this is a, a celebration set. See how they did that little cutout and put it over here? That was cute. Here are at least one of the papers with the owl. And again, the same dies. People are loving these, um, these something fancy dies. This is a punch, three patterns. Here's again, two pa patterns. I like this layout a lot. It really shows off the designer paper and here's the same stamp set and the same set of dies. So you can see it's very popular. Again, three patterns on a fun fold. These are all swaps that I had and here is an owl, the adorable owl set. So those are all using the designer paper and some most of the something fancy bundle. So this is $45.75 and just a lot of great um, shapes and a lot of them layer. So I'll show you those in a little bit. So this is on page 14, the Dandy Designs. Hi everybody from Washington and North Dakota and Idaho. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so we're, I, I am doing a repeat. I will declare that right away. Do you remember the stack and cut template? I wanted to show off this designer paper, so I decided to use the stack and cut template. So I will be posting a new version of this with without my rough handwriting and measurements. My husband uh, worked on it last night. He does a lot of my templates for me. And of course he sent it to me in an email. And so I cannot access that. <laughs> so here are, one, here's one version of the stack and cut template. Aren't those colors just soft and beautiful? Springy. So this is petal pink with fresh freesia. I would never have put them together. Never, ever, ever. Um, but it works. It works. I think there's also a little bit of the pale papaya in here, the darker. There's two different uh, purples and two different pinks or petal pinks, I guess I should say. Yeah, they are. They're just pretty. So I did use a couple different ribbons. All these tags are from, let me show you. This is the my these are the dies so you can see there's two of these that coordinate together or layer together and there's two of those there's three of this shape and how these work right here is you put that in there and you can do it at the same time and so you get a little notch now I think I used all I don't know if I used that one on the cards that I'm going to show with you show you today but this is probably my favorite pick of dies in the new spring catalog. Just love the layering, as you can see the layers here. This one is this with this uh, hexagon on top of it. So, all right, and there's the greetings. And what I love about this set for greetings is it looks just like your handwriting, but they mixed it with the print, the, Sarah, uh, the cursive with the print font and yeah, I just think they're really, really great greetings that we're using. So that's the first set. And now I also made, I couldn't stop, honestly. It's just so addictive. So here is the second set. Now this probably is my favorite because you know how I am about uh, turquoise. Um, that's one of my favorite colors. So this, again, I would never have put balmy blue with Coastal Cabana. But it works because the designer paper pulls it all together. So you can see that is the little tulip die cut through the tag. And here is the axis that I used for a ribbon for the other. Bring it back in here. This one right here that fits right in there. You can leave it alone or I pulled a knot of ribbon right through there. Isn't that cute? They're great dies, great dies. So we're gonna make another set um, show you how simple this is and man if you want quick cards you will want to use this template it is super easy so I do have besides my template so we're gonna we're gonna leave that up there and get some of my pieces out all right so I did start cutting 
already. So I'm just going to stack. So you basically stack and cut. So you start out with designer paper that is three. Did I? Yeah, I did cover it up. That is three and three quarter by five. So these are, this is not to scale. It's close, but this is three and three quarter by five. Okay, then you break in your paper trimmer and I'm gonna cover that up. So your first cut for me, I do the two and a half. So I stack them, I usually do two pieces at the same time. So bring that over to the two and a half. So there's the two, there's the three. Bring that over to two and a half. And I always push up against my um, trimmer and then I'm gonna cut. Right, set that aside for now. Then the next piece is two and a quarter. So I do have to turn this and put that at the two and a quarter mark. Okay, so now this is gonna go here. I like to put it um, in place like I cut them. I don't know why, it's just what I do. So then you take the strip that was remaining, that piece right there, and line it up, bring it over, and now I'm going to, I'm gonna do the three and a quarter. Doesn't have to be in line because this is a random pattern. Now, if your pattern, oh, I think you really just wanna use a random pattern. You do not want to use a pattern that has, uh, say, a seam on it because your seam will be wonky when you put it all together. Okay, so there are all my pieces. That's all we need to do with that. So bring this in and stack them. Okay, so next, what you wanna do is cut four pieces, and I have six here just because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use um, what colors I wanted to use. I'm gonna start with the white. So I'll do this, I'm gonna do two whites. Okay, I'm gonna move this over, hopefully you can still see it. And I'll, I just don't think I'm gonna use mango. I think because I think that designer paper has a lot of mango on it. Okay, so we're gonna take this piece and do one of each and set that there. I'll we'll take this big piece and we're gonna skip one. In fact, I think I'm gonna go over here because I don't like that on there. So skip one, we'll do that one here. You can just kind of play. Yeah, that works. So now we're gonna, we're gonna have less options as we go along. So hopefully this is making sense to you. So I can't put this here because I want a different pattern. So that one's gonna go here. Oh, yeah, that'll go here. And this one goes here. So that means this one goes here. So see how it just, it, process of elimination, this one isn't anywhere or on this card. And this one would go on that card here and here. So now I can decide, do I like the white? Do I want to switch it to mango? I don't think so, because a lot of these are so solid. I kind of like the white. So then you just start gluing. It's that easy. I'm just going to give myself some room for these and start adhering. So when you adhere, you just leave oh, an eighth of an inch and don't press hard. Now I could flip some of these. See how I could flip that? Because I did use three different papers. Normally I just choose two, but I kind of liked having the, the star um, in the other color. So I did swap, um, added three different patterns here. Because they're double-sided, you don't have to do that, but you could just use two. So that's what I'd recommend to start with, is just picking two double-sided papers and adhering them, or, or stacking and cutting. So, get this done, hopefully pretty quickly. So how many of you have used this template to make um, quick stack and cut cards? I saw some comment, but I missed it. Um, I missed who said that. Let's see, I think this goes this way. I hope I'm not flipping and not supposed to flip. Hopefully I'm doing it the right way. And you know, if it doesn't end up being perfect, I can see that's off a little bit. That's just because my measurements 
work perfect. And once you add your greeting layers, it all works out fine. I just don't like to sweat the small stuff. So I'm gonna put those and, okay, do these bottom ones first. And when you do this, use adhesive that you can lift up. If you have trouble with this kind of thing and getting things straight, don't press real hard because then you can lift them up and reposition. So I almost don't recommend using the liquid glue if you're going to have to reposition. It's better to use tape runner if you have trouble getting things straight. It's, it's just easier for you to move things around. See how quick this is? Uh, and the patterns are so small, the prints. They're not wild or, um, I don't know, they're, they're just easy to work with. And they coordinate so well. You saw those cards um, that I did. They just coordinate so beautifully with the paper. And, and you know, having only um, two colors is kind of freeing in a way. It's like people have so much trouble with color combinations and figuring out what to put where and what to, what to eliminate. This plan, you only need to worry about two colors. So, all right, so next, what I did with these cards is I turned them all into fun folds. So this is four and a quarter by 11, and I just added an, an extra score line of two and three quarters besides the five and a half. So that turns your card into a fun fold. And then for the vertical, I simply added, so this is the normal size card, correct? Uh, five and a half by eight and a half. Just add an extra two and an eighth and then a four and a quarter and you can turn them into fun folds. So if you don't want to, you don't need to. This, this could go, like here is, I did some white card bases. So you wouldn't have to change that at all. You can just leave it as a, as a normal opening of a card. And the same with this. If you don't want to do a fun fold, don't worry about it. Just um, do it standard. But it is kind of neat to add that extra score line to add to your card. What do you think? You like the blues? Yeah, the blues are very, very calm and soothing. Well, of course, these are too. These uh, Fresh Freesia and Petal Pink. So anyway, I have, let me change. Here are the measurements right here. If you wanna do a screenshot, oops, let me, there, there's your, here is access to the layouts that I did. If you wanna do a quick screenshot while I fold my cards on their card, on their score lines, you're taking down your tree today, Kathy? Yep, we're gonna do that this weekend. We were gonna do it last weekend and we thought, oh, one more week, Who's, who cares? We just enjoy having our tree up so much that um, we're gonna give it another week, probably the latest we've ever done, but that's okay. We stopped turning on our outside Christmas lights thinking, well, it might be a little bit late for, for having Christmas lights on. Okay these and then we'll start adding our greetings and I'll show you more of those uh, something fancy dies. Okay, so this will be on my blog uh, either later this week or early next week. I haven't decided when. Um, I have a lot to share. So what you want to do now, here are my card bases and what I do, especially with white, because I didn't use thick white, I used thin, is I didn't even add an extra score line and I did the same with the other card stuff. Just you can change your, your mind very easily by just folding that on in half, this front. So you don't even have to use a, a score if you don't want to. You can simply use your bone folder, okay? All right, so now what I usually do is, so I know I don't want this on the, the Calypso Coral, so that card will go here. This card will likely go on here, or this layer. And I think that'll go on there. 
and this one will go here. So when you look at these cards, um, I want to kind of show you one tip you can see. Now pay attention to the, the star paper. You see how every card has it in a different position? So here on the bottom left, here on the bottom or bottom right, bottom left, um, lower left. Oh, this one is in a different position. Hmm. Anyway, you kind of get what I mean. If I put it this way, that would show up a little bit better. So you see how that these all will make a normal layer. It's kind of, there we go. <laughs> oh, I used to be good at puzzles. I really honestly did. So here we have lower left, lower right. Here we have upper left, upper right. So that's a way you can see that, yes, I used every piece of that paper and you can do that with every pattern. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, you gotta laugh at yourself, right? When you, when you feel kind of silly. Okay, so just add a little glue. Be sure you don't go outside the edges. And I just don't like to get too close to my edges and then I don't have any ooze. So we'll do that, and we're going to put some on this. And sometimes you can slide it in a little bit, and that will catch some glue into all corners. Okay. There we go. And the last one right here. And then I'll show you some, some ideas for finishing these cards. And you can use any um, greetings or dies or punches to add the detail to these. So let's put those up there. And bring in our pieces. So I like to save time. So here I stamp these ahead of time. Oops, this is how I want to do this one. I wanted to do it vertical like that, even though it's a little wonky. Oh, I'm surprised that's so wonky. You know what I mean by, I suppose it's supposed to be like, hmm, like that. You know, I might just leave it like that. Now that I look at that, I like the, the thank you on its edge. Okay, so let's get some dimensionals. Gotta add those. You can see that I stamped it on one side and it didn't quite stamp uh, nicely, so I did it again. Yeah, I did not realize that this was um, not a perfect, what I would call a perfect hexagon. Okay, there's that one. Now what I decided to do, because if you put that on there, you lose a little bit of that detail. So I cut out, and I had just another scrap, and I, I'm gonna just, finish cutting that off so I don't have to worry about the end and then just access the upper part maybe a little bit up here just to hold it in place and then just adhere that on top and then I have a little window of white showing that die cut detail and then I'm going to scoot that so you can't see that white behind it on the edges. Okay, so then you can just decide, you know, which one that's going to go on. Here, I will be doing this one sideways. So that's the, the fun about these, these tags is that you can place them any which way you want. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to save this one for a later because I think I'll add ribbon to it. So you can see on here, I did use that, um, that insert or that little peak for the top of the tag because I'm going to add some ribbon to that. Okay, all right. So the ribbons that I found, I have white, we don't have Calypso Coral ribbon, but we have a white crinkled. We have the, oh, petal pink, why is that here? I guess I don't have petal pink because that does, I mean, it's in there, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's just so subtle. I don't know if I like it with that. So I think I'll end up using the uh, white crinkle. Now we also have new twine and I believe, well, you know what? Nope, this is pumpkin pie. It's close. So I guess I am stuck, not stuck with the crinkled. So what I'm going to do though is bring in, 
scrap paper, move my tags around, and I'm gonna color some ribbon with so coral because I did bring my blends marker. So we're just going to color this. I should hold on to it a little bit better. And color enough to do a tag. And that's enough to do that pull through. In fact, that's more than I need. Hold on. I'm going to do a little bit more for a bow. I can kind of estimate. But this is a great way to get color. I'm going to do a little more for that, that um, pull through. And I can always do more. Okay, so first we're going to tie a bow. And it, it, this, this ribbon is so thin, it goes on both sides. So I'm gonna do the bunny ears. On my Facebook page yesterday, I did show a diagram of the bunny ear method. So I know some of you commented that um, you use the, the bunny ear method and other people said you're gonna try it. So I hope you do. I do find it very, um, very easy for the most part. So there is my bow. And I believe this will be enough I'll just get rid of that for my pull through. Okay, so what I want to do with this one is another technique I like to use, and that is the zigzag method. <clears throat> so you basically just, I don't ever cut my ribbon off. You start off with, I, I try and fold it into thirds. So then I press Maybe just a little bit hanging out here. There. Pressing it on that tape runner. And there. Can you kind of see? It's white on white, I know, but it's it's you can kind of see what I did there. You do I do like to use a tape runner instead of glue dots for this. So then you have just a pretty little accent of your ribbon. And then I have to cover up that adhesive with some dimensionals if I want to pop it up or, or it's going to stick to my next layer. Just center that. Okay. All right. So then you have to decide. Now we have right here. Like that one for that one. This one I think will go there. And debating on, on this. What I want to do if I want to add a bow or some ribbon but let's do this first so when you're doing a pull through what I always advise my customers to do is fold it in half and put the fold through the front okay so put the put the fold through the hole then open that up and put your tails through the hole now when you're pulling this be really careful to pull as you get tighter, be really careful to pull one at a time because you can easily pull through that hole with, if you're pulling too tight. Okay, so that'll go on there. And I'm just not sure what I want to, I think I want a white bow on there because there's a lot of coral. So once again, just bunny ears. Cross them over, one loop through the hole or the head, and then you tighten. And it always looks terrible. One end is always more than the other. So what you do is hold the knot and then start pulling. So you're, I'm holding the center knot and then pulling each of the tails. And then I usually kind of pinch each one and pull. And you don't have to pull it as tight as you might think if you're using glue dots. Okay, so this one, I believe, and what I like to do, I'll show you what I like to do, is stick it, um, adhere it underneath. Um, so you only see, I've got an extra glue dot on my thumb. <laughs> so I like to adhere it underneath so I don't see the knot and you just see the, the loops on the bow and then you could add a, a, a gem or something on there but aren't they cute not sure what i'm going to do with this one i thought of adding some gems i don't know if i like the bow i think i'll save that i could actually add that bow up here and have both a tail and a bow that's kind of cute 
What do you think? Now I do have some gems that kind of match. This set right here, the Fun Flower Resin Shapes actually has Calypso Coral um, on it. So those could be used. Actually, you know what I think I might do? What do you think? Just add that right there. That kind of adds some fun. I also have what I, as the um, rhinestone, champagne rhinestones. And I colored a couple of them, Calypso Coral, with my blends marker so they they match a little closer you can kind of see they're a little darker than the rest of them these these this row right here so i thought i would add them i almost thought about doing it around these this like tree or leaf stem i'm not sure or i could just add them to some of these i'm gonna start with that that just that's kind of fun just to add some fun to the rhinestones or the flowers that are on here. I don't know. Kind of, kind of neat. So yeah, this one, I just don't know what I want to do with that. If I want to add, I could sneak that bow kind of underneath like I like to do and just give a little bit of flair to it. That's kind of cute too. Might do that. So that, I mean, I'm not gonna adhere at all because you all know how to do that, but you kind of see how fun this idea, these stack and cut cards, actually I'm gonna adhere that just so it doesn't move. It's pretty fast. That's straight. Yeah, I think so. So how, how fast these can be. So now I want to know what color combo is your favorite. So we have the, I'm gonna call these pastels. We have the blues, and then we have the, uh, the brights. We'll call these the brights. So brights, blues, pastel. What's your favorite? I'm gonna say that mine are the blues. Not normally a blue. I, I like this color combination as well. But, um, but yeah, it's just a fun way to make cards. So if you need, I think my friend Katie, I don't know if Katie's watching, not Katie McLean, Katie Crowell, she was needing a bunch of cards for um, gifts. And I said, oh, you should use this, this deck and cut template because it is just so quick. You just need greetings. I mean, it's the layers are easy, the cut, cuts are nice and easy. So she was anxious to use this template for her, her gifts for her aunts, I think she's making them for. So yeah. Yeah, the pastel do look like baby cards, you're right. That would be great baby cards. And actually this one too, girl, boy, like make, make, make a set and you're, you're good. You're good for girls and boys. And these could be great birthday cards. So yeah, that is what I have for you today. And like I said, that's featuring the Dandy Designs free designer paper in the uh, celebration catalog. I lost my catalog now. It's here somewhere. Here we go. So that is free with a $100 order. It's on, what did I say, page 14? Yeah, right here. So that's through uh, supplies last. I honestly think that this is one of the things that could go out of stock. If you are ordering um, and getting something free and you might do it again in, in February, I highly encourage you to get the designer papers because the designer papers they ordered probably from out of the country and they will run out of those before they run out of the stamp sets. So choose designer paper first for your free items and get the stamp sets later because they do make their own stamp sets. So yeah, Eddie, you gotta get in the groove again. Get some time to, to start stamping and using your stuff. I always tell people that, you know, if you're having trouble getting yourself to stamp, you've got to schedule it in. You actually have to jot it on your calendar and say, okay, Saturday afternoon, I am stamping. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the only way to get it done. You have to have a purpose. You need to have some time set aside. It just doesn't happen on its own. And I know it's hard if you don't have a designed space that you can leave everything out. Um, so, you know, take com command your table, take command of your, your dining room table for a few days and just say, hey, we're eating on the couch for a couple days, you know, or whatever. 
<laughs> so, so just set your stuff up and go to town and do something like these cards and templates. I think you'll love them once you make them. And you can use punches. You don't have to use the dies to, um, to finish the cards. Punches are great. Okay, so I do want to share, I did finish my kits to go, and I know a lot of you are interested in them. So I decided to use the By the Bay designer paper, and it's just gorgeous paper, and it has this iridescent gold and kind of an iridescent or a glossy uh, design to them. So, and you know, they're not even really oceany or bay side or whatever you want to say. So here, and they're almost all fun folds. So here is one that is, I'm calling a vertical slider. So I've done this on Facebook before and it's a fun fold. Just different ribbon technique on that one than this one. And this one opens this way. And you can decide to adhere this. So basically when you're making this card, go ahead and adhere this piece and then it just latches closed. So it doesn't, um, it stays nice and flat. So that's those cards. Here's another one. Now this is such a cool to, uh, fold. And this is an idea for my friend Susie Wood. And she's so good at, at fun folds. You see how it's it, it ends here, the, the card base, and this one ends here. And then you can use this if you want to. Let me add more adhesive there as a gift card holder. But that's those two cards. Like I said, it, they're all fun full. Well, almost all. I think this is the only one that's not such a pretty. I wanted to really make the most of that paper because it was one of my favorites. So with this kit, you get half a pack of the designer paper. You get um, a, the some of the uh, balmy blue, I think ombre or uh, whatever ribbon. <laughs> and then you get these gems. And I don't know where I put my gems. Oh, here they are. You get these milky, adhesive back milky dots. It's kind of hard to see. And there's another color up here, but they match beautifully with this paper. So here's another fun fold. Just they're all just neat. And then a traditional fun fold really shows off the designer paper. So th those are the By the Bay cards. And they'll be up on my, um, my flower, bugs, flower Bug shop later today, I hope, if I can get... Um, access to it with my uh, computer issues that I'm having. Oh, yay. Technology, technology. Okay, the other one, I really struggled with what other designer paper because there's so much right now, but I decided to use the Regency Park, and these are all fun folds. So this one is kind of a latch card. So you can see this little banner hangs out, but I didn't adhere it all the way down. So this piece just slips right in slips right in there. So this, isn't that paper pretty? And this is Mango Melody, Balmy Blue, Navy. Here we've got some more of the Mango Melody. This, a very, a lot of blue. So if you're into blues, you're gonna like these cards. And I, um, remember everything is die cut. Now in this case, you get um, a share of this and some of the Navy, um, made of Navy, let's see, this is bordered ribbon. It's just beautiful. These are all new ribbons. So here's a fun one. It's a double bridge card. So see, there's a, um, a window sheet covering that. It's kind of neat. Now I did fussy cut some of the flowers, but if you have a, a punch, you can do that too. So you don't have to fussy cut. You do get all the punched pieces, all the die cut pieces. Here's that same die that I like so much with the little, um, this is an offset gatefold, kind of just a little bit different. And this one I haven't done for a while either. And this is one of those triple, triple strip, I don't even know what you call it, triple layer cards, but it kind of catches and stays. So yeah, that is, those are the 10 cards. So you get the free tutorial, $20 in product, the 10 pre-cut cards, all for $28. And then you add shipping. So those are all on my flower bug shop. They're not there quite yet, but Hopefully within the day, I will have them up there and ready to, for purchase. So, and if you want them both, you can click on them both and the shipping will adjust the combined shipping on the site. So it shouldn't be a problem. You won't pay extra shipping. So, all right, I think that's it. I will see you all next Tuesday and um, hopefully have my computer issues straightened out by then too. 
All right, have a great week, and I hope you make time to stamp this week. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.